Um, I was watching the movie and I kept thinking about where's the camera placed. I mean, we see shots of you heard a couple times with the camera, but then we see two helicopters and there's obviously like a third one. Like, you talk a little bit about how many cameras you have shooting at all times and things like that? Um, yeah, like, so we'll have, um, typically, uh, one or two helmet camera systems running at all times. Um, we, we roll with a Phantom HD, um, and then eventually a Phantom Flex, so for our high-speed images. And then, um, you know, kind of the camera that changed the way I look at cinematography was the Cineplex. It's actually a, it's a 14-inch gimbal system. It has five gyros. It's stabilized. It's controlled by the military, apparently, can launch a missile. Um, that's kind of interesting. Um, the, you know, to, to be able to get down and get into the action so fast like you know you can put this camera on the helicopter and you can get these rock solid images um as well as like cars trucks snowmobiles and um you know there's at, at any given time we had about seven cameras shooting um and i i typically look at like two of the cameras as as um you know the creative solution and and i look at about five of the cameras as um you know, security, and it's kind of crazy, but, you know, there's, when, like, if, for instance, Travis is trying these, like, crazy triple cork tricks or whatever, you know, like, we have to, if, if we miss this, this trick, we're missing a piece of history, and this can't be done again, so we have to document it perfectly, and, you know, it's a little over the top, but we, we always try to make sure we have multiple coverage, um, you yeah. On all on all scenarios, and then, and then mixing all these formats is the biggest nightmare in the entire world. And yeah, I think Carrie could probably speak to that. Carrie, do you want to speak to that for a little bit about you know doing the color and, and the color correction and working with all these formats? Yeah, uh, well, as Kurt mentioned, there were multiple formats. So you got you know Phantom, Cineflex, Red, and all these cameras have different color signs to them. So the raw image may, you know the wildly different from shot to shot, uh, although it's the same event, the same moment. And in the edit, you're using, you know, many, you know, many cameras uh, for one scene. So a big part of my job is trying to make those all look consistent mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, fit the look that Kurt wants to achieve. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, some of, the, some of the cameras tend to respond differently and uh, have different latitudes uh, in its acquisition, but you know, these guys did an amazing job, and I, I feel pretty lucky for this project to have fallen in my lap. Um, Carrie, how is uh, using the Dolby Professional Reference Monitor in your process? <laughs> Brand, it, organic branding. <laughs> That's what we're doing. No, it was seriously the coolest thing ever. I mean, this monitor, for me, you know, from more of a layman's standpoint, the monitor, to be totally honest, it was like you have a monitor that can that can um, you know I would I would call it like the chameleon because it can it can you can emulate uh, uh, an LCD a plasma uh, you know CRT, CRT and all of these different monitors that like because I'm always like oh god like we, like I told Gary I was like we need to set up like a, a plasma and an LCD and like kind of like because they all have su such different like visual experiences and. And these guys are like, well, you just hit the button on this monitor. <laughs> and like, it does, it does that. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> the, uh, the monitor, I mean, had, had such a amazing uh, resolution quality. And I mean, you guys shot really high production value. You know, it wasn't just a shoot from the hip camcorder kind of thing. So to, to be able to color grade in, you know, on a monitor that really represents the, the resolution uh, at, you know, at such a high level is, is pretty special. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Anyone else have any uh, questions out there? Okay. Um, no, no disrespect to the safety guy, but there's going to be very little evidence of safety. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a question. That's because we were drinking the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> um, avalanche, when the hill gives way, um, what's the strategy? Uh, so this is a Two questions, but is it straight, left, right? Um, you were in Patagonia, right, Mark? Talk, talk to Clark, yeah. too. Clark, Clark, <laughs> uh, he's the one responsible. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with both of them. Yeah, whatever your, whatever your question well, is. I mean, sure. I, 
every situation is different. Um, every slope that we go to and every line we do, um, we assess the face, whether it takes an hour, two hours, three hours, um, a couple minutes. You know, we do our homework and strategically find landmarks throughout the, you know, the slope to help us if anything happens. Like, so what I'm trying to say, I guess, is that every situation is different. Sometimes, um, you know, you want to, you're going to want to cut right if anything pops. So you're going to want I mean, there's no, there's no set formula. And that's what the toughest thing about it is. And um, I think the hardest thing about it is trying to turn that little mental button off in your head and, uh, you know, just push through all that bullshit. And He's the one that got slid in the movie, too. And, you know, they, that's, that's a situation that we, you really just don't, you don't plan for those situations. Well, you, I mean, you, you plan for them, but you, you hope that they don't arrive. You definitely plan for it, because, I mean, in my um, preliminary kind of breakdown of the line, um, I told myself that if anything happened, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot to the right and try to tackle this tree, because I knew if I went over the falls on this particular line, that I was going to get crunched in between these two rocks. Um, they were probably 50 feet up in the air, so it would have taken... If they could have gotten to me, at least probably over an hour or something, you know, way too long. And um, so I knew that thing in the back of my head was to pretty much essentially tackle these trees that were on my right and either hang onto the trees or else, you know, get sucked down into the valley to the right like I did, which is what I wanted, um, but not to get flipped off the cliff. Oh. Like that happened in the end. That wasn't part of the plan. Um, but you know, every situation is different, and it's all an assessment of the the slope, the the conditions, not only the conditions of the day, um, but the whole year. You know, leading up to that. So, uh, Clark. Let me let me set Clark up. Let me set Clark up because he's a he's a safety a guy, but he has already. a tricky position because. He's a safety guy, and if it was a just a normie, normal heli skier, he'd say, don't go there. But he's dealing with professional athletes, and these guys are the best in the world. So he has to kind of play this card of, these guys are really good. They can do amazing things. They're superheroes. So he has to kind of judge, we're pushing the limits here. I want to help these guys push the limits, but at the same time, I want to help them be safe. So Clark's let Clark talk beyond that. Clark? Yeah, I've, I've been set up already by multiple people already. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start by telling Clark's oh, story. And let's you know, tell him the story. Now, this, 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 this is worth hearing. Okay, we'll, we'll go more set up, I guess. No, there's a little more set up. Okay, so, um, is this okay? Essentially, <laughs> we got Clark fired. Um, well, Travis did, if you want to break it down. Oh, yeah, no, um, I'll tell you real quick. Just story, the, 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 the quick and dirty is that um, the, um, Travis jumped out of that helicopter in Alaska. And um, apparently that's not extremely legal, but the, um, the, the pilot said it was okay. Clark was just kind of like, I think it's, maybe it's okay. I, mean, I don't know, it's Travis Rice, you know? And, um, and the, you know, the, the uh, long story short, we got a little scare from the FAA. Apparently they kind of run things. And, um, and the pilot apparently was going to get fired. I don't know if he ended up officially getting fired. Clark got no. fired, which is pretty interesting. And he was like the lead guy at one of the biggest operations in Alaska. For and, um, seven years? For seven years. And so I thought that was um, total, um, what they call BS. And um, I said, you know, like this guy's the best in the world. We we clicked with him, and we said, yeah, you know, um, this was for the, this was for the best, Clark. So I, Clark's now on the brain farm team, which is yeah, cool. So it's either so now philanthropy full -time, or you never know, really, or really full time um, safety uh, slash uh, uh, life consultant. <laughs> Just a, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, but, yeah. Well, no, this is not related to avalanche as well, so you go ahead. I was going to say, just to answer your question, I haven't had it, I've been set up multiple times there already, so <laughs> my two cents in here, but yeah, I mean, what these guys do is truly, you know, it's well beyond what, you know, anyone can expect, so like people, I get, I get this question a lot, like, you know, you know, it looks dangerous, there's actually a tremendous amount of safety that's put into it, you know, for instance, you know, in the Alaska shoot, which is the first 20 or 18 minutes of the movie, we were there for three weeks, you know, the slopes we were going to, 
there's a tremendous amount of effort and analysis that goes into all those slopes. Um, what I've been doing for you know 12 years or so, and been on a bunch of productions throughout my whole life or through my whole career. And it's a hard line, like those guys were saying. I mean, you can have like I do a bunch of guiding for you know clientele. So if you guys <clears throat> come to Alaska or come somewhere and and you know pay me a bunch of money, then it's a very different story. You know, I will actually tell you what to do. But when I have like Mark Lambic or I have Travis Rice being like, hey, I want to go gap over that hundred foot crevasse and do a double cork over it, I can be like, well, that absolutely is not safe. 100%. I'll tell you that you know, for sure. But once again, we have the best athletes on the planet, you know. So it's one of those things, you know, and there's many times where Mark will be a little bit mean and be like, hey, what do you think? You know, I gen what I like to call myself is more a consultant than be like a person to say like, I, you know, you should or should not do that because again, I can in the end be like, hey, I've said, I yeah, didn't think he's it was not safe. a safety judge. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's more like I think the snow is going to react like that. I, you know, you might want to watch out for that crevasse because the fall line goes into that crevasse. So if you do get in a situation, you want to pull right or left, or if you there's a cliff that you're going to go over if you get pulled over that direction and whatnot. So it is a it's a sounds like a pretty challenging job. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. I mean, once again, we got the best crew in the world, we got the best riders in the world. So yeah, you got to follow hard, up to that. Hard to that. Was unrelated as well. I guess Avalanche is a vector too. The whole vector kind of graphic um, that you started at the beginning. I just wanted to sort of get the creative thinking behind that. Um, it's all based off triangulation. Triangulation is how you find flight path. So um, it had. I would call it like a subliminal, deep rooted, you know, um, creative form from the graphic standpoint. But uh, all of the um, all of that, all based off of triangulation and the flight path. So that's really kind of how it came into play. It actually started off very 3D and bubbly and very um, uh, gimmicky. And we, I, I actually, I spent probably two months building the graphics for the film. And in the last two weeks of the film, I made the team delete everything and start over and go with a very, very thin, very um, subtle approach to it, because I, which is kind of sucked because there was some super cool, like amazing 3D, you know, imaging and shadow casting, and, and I, I, for some reason, was just like, this is just over the top, so we just went with something very clean and simple um, for, the, for the graphic package. Oh, cool. Thanks. It was. Um,